uh, I'm here. I'm Dr. Shifa Salim. I am working in Irish Wellness Medical Center in Abu Dhabi. It's around one and a half hour drive from here. So uh, I'm going to talk about the laser dentistry today. I don't know um, how many of you have some experience with the lasers, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's developing. Dentistry is developing. Medical side is definitely developing, along with the dentistry is developing every day. So this lasers, I think, needs more of, uh, you know, we should do more studies or more work on lasers every day to get it more popularized because I feel lasers are very much underrated right now. No, not everybody is considering lasers. So uh, that's why I'm here today, actually. So um, as... Uh, the, the, currently, there are a number of laser wavelengths that we use in laser dentistry, and uh, they are the, the carbon dioxide wavelengths, the NDAG, argon, various diode wavelengths. I'm, I'm, I'll be talking about in detail in the coming slides, the erbium wavelengths and uh, the potassium titanyl phosphate. And there are many applications, the soft tissue procedures like gingivectomy, gingivoplasty, ovuloplasty, excision, incision, uh, phrenectomy, removal of hypoplastic and granulation tissue, second stage recovery of implants, uh, guided tissue regeneration, treatment of periodontal diseases, after ulcers, herpetic lesions, leukoplakia, and even verrucous carcinoma and also in uh, control of bleeding in vascular lesions the arthroscopic uh, temporomandibular joint surgery in uh, caries diagnosis and removal in curing of composites activation of tooth bleaching solutions the root canal deprivement and preparation and osteotomy and osseous crown lengthening so the, this is the, 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 from the electromagnetic spectrum, I would like to spot out the lasers that we use now. From the visible spectrum, that is around 400 to 700 nanometers, we have two lasers. That is the KTP with 532 nanometers and the Diagnodent with 655 nanometers wavelength. And in the invisible thermal radiation spectrum, we have... Uh, a number of number of lasers that we use in dentistry, and that is uh, the 980 nanometer diode lasers, the 940 and the 1064 nanometer diode lasers, the NDAG, erbium chromium YSGG, and the erbium YAG lasers, uh, and the CO2 lasers, the carbon dioxide lasers. Now the the, uh, these are the uh, dental units that we use uh, from the um, emitting visible light. That is the argon lasers. But the argon lasers nowadays we don't use in, it was during the beginning um, we, that we used in dentistry. But nowadays it's used uh, by the ophthalmologist for the eye surgery. But uh, the ones that we use are the NDAG lasers the, or the KTP lasers with the um, um, 532 nanometer wavelength, the low level lasers are the uh, red non-surgical wavelengths of 600 to 635 nanometers that's used for photobiomodulation, which I'll be talking in detail, and um, 655 nanometers, which is used for the caries detection. So uh, the uh, four, uh, these are the four dental units we use from the visible light spectrum. Then the invisible laser lights uh, that we use are the diode lasers with the 800 to 1064 nanometer. Uh, we have the NDAG laser. NDAG laser is 1064. 
Then we have the erbium chromium YSGG 2780 nanometer and the erbium YAG 2940 nanometers. And we finally have the CO2 lasers, which is the most versatile uh, lasers uh, we use in dentistry. That's 9300 to 10600 nanometers. Okay, uh, let's start with the applications that we uh, use lasers in dentistry for. The first we want to mention with, we want to start with the laser assisted non-surgical periodontal therapy, which is also called as the laser assisted uh, new attachment procedure, the LANAP. Now lasers have direct delete, uh, uh, the best advantage of lasers is that they have direct deleterious effect on the bacteria which helps in the body's healing response against periodontitis. And uh, laser used as adjunctive therapy after the scaling and uh, root planing. LANAP is the regenerative technique which helps to regrow and rejuvenate uh, the gum tissue rather than cutting it away. And LANAP treats the gum disease without pain, without any gum line recession, and also increased sensitivity traditionally associated with periodontal treatments. Now, the, uh, the, the current lasers, um, they, they focus on the biofilm within the pocket walls. Uh, when we are doing the lasers supplement after the um, as a um, conjunction, um, as a procedure after, followed by the scaling and the root planing procedure. Uh, they are, the lasers are bactericidal. Uh, the argon and the NDAG lasers, they are very uh, specific to the pigmented bacteria, which is the, they show strong uh, absorption in darkly pigmented bacteria with a consequent direct increased effect on the red and orange complex bacteria associated with periodontitis. Now, Morris et al. has um, reported that the bleeding intakes has improved 96.9 percentage of the patients uh, treated with laser-assisted non-surgical therapy uh, after the conventional therapy uh, and compare with when compared to 66.7 uh, percentage of patients which is treated with conventionally without lasers. So they also concluded that diode lasers assisted uh, periodontal therapy provided a bactericidal effect, reduced the inflammation and supported healing of the periodontal pockets through elimination of bacteria. Now, Video try. Can you try by clicking on it? He cannot play it. No, no. Just try to uh, put the cursor on it. Ah, yeah. Ah, okay. No, actually, this is a personal patient oh, okay. case. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, this is a, th this is a LANA procedure that I did at my clinic. We, I, we it gave me. Uh, a very good result. So, uh, the first active. Ah, oh, never mind. It's okay. Yeah. No, okay, no problem. Okay, uh, so the uh, first is the periodontal infection therapy. The objection, objective is to reduce the uh, in gingival inflammation. Um, first, the scaling and the root planing is done. Um, that is a non-surgical periodontal therapy is done. Then the circular, uh, circular debridement with uh, diode lasers or NDAG lasers or CO2 lasers or, and even erbium lasers can be used. Uh, what's happening is a laser decontamination of the pockets um, and also there is a laser coagulation occurring which is the sealing of the capillaries and the lymphatics after the laser decontamination of the 
tissue. Now, this is a LANAP treatment plan. Uh, in the first appointment, uh, first obviously we take the, the periodontal chart, the, we, we assess the periodontal pocket, the recession, everything. And then uh, we do a scaling and root planning for the patient. Then when we start with the LANAP uh, treatment, in the first appointment, we uh, do the debridement and the laser application in the upper right quadrant. Okay. And then we call for a second appointment. So this is usually done at least with so many appointments. We have to do it in a repeated appointments to get a good result. Okay. So uh, in the appointment two, in the second appointment, um, uh, wherever we did in the upper right quadrant, uh, the, wherever the pocket depth is more than four millimeters, we repeat the lasers and we do the lower left quadrant. Then the third appointment, uh, wherever the uh, pockets are more than five millimeters, we repeat the lasers and we do on the upper left quadrant. On the fourth appointment, uh, the, wherever the pockets are more than six millimeters of depth, uh, we repeat the lasers and then we do the lower right quadrant. And finally, uh, wherever the areas are more than seven millimeters of pocket, we repeat the lasers and uh, the uh, lower right and the lower left quadrant is done. Then in the follow-up appointments, we check again for the pockets and wherever the pockets are still there, we have to repeat the laser application. So, um, the periodontal therapies are always, uh, we have to maintain the oral health by eliminating the local microbiologic factors and it is clinically achieved by preserving the clinical attachment level, the, by maintaining the alveolar bone height, eliminating the inflammation and ensuring the comfortable function. Um, of course, daily care with professional care with host immune support only will give as a good result for the periodontal therapy. Uh, this uh, is a good study that I found. Um, it's a study on LANAP by Yukna Are, uh, clinical evaluation of the laser assisted new attachment procedure. Uh, uh, this was, uh, the, this LANAP was uh, done using, um, only, um, yeah. Uh, in this, uh, the results, the, all the 22 patients who completed the 12 to 18 month follow-up uh, with pocket depth, the clinical attachment level and the furcation showed substantial improvement. Recession was minimal, while 93.5 percentage of uh, pocket depth measurements were 3 millimeters or less at the revaluation, which is a very good result. So furthermore, um, 40 percentage of grade 2 vocation was also closed clinically. So uh, as a conclusion, with, within the limits of this case series, LANAP was found to be an effective, minimally invasive laser surgical therapy for moderate to advanced periodontitis. Uh, this was a case that I did at my clinic. Uh, this patient, when he came, he had severe inflammation, as you can see, severe gum inflammation with a pocket. He had a crown on uh, the upper right central incisor, and the pocket depth was 5 millimeters on the day he visited me. I did a, a scaling and root planing, and uh, I did a laser application on the uh, uh, the. Uh, upper right central incisor. Uh, I used an 808 nanometer diode laser with 2.5 watt power continuous wave mode for three seconds. And uh, as you can see in the, in this is the follow up photo after uh, 18 days, that is after more than two weeks, I could see there was a significant reduction in the uh, inflammation. Uh, and the probing depth uh, was uh, literally reduced by two millimeters. It was only three millimeters in after two weeks, which was a very good result. 
that I got with an 808 diode laser. So the advantages of laser therapy is that it can be used in children, pregnant women, immunocompromised patients, the patients with pacemakers or defibrillators or other implanted medical devices. And laser wavelengths are bactericidal with associated improvement in indices related to the periodontal health and understanding the applications and safe techniques of laser assisted therapy provides a definitely a higher standard of care. Now let's go on to the lasers in the surgical periodontics. The advantages are uh, there will be minimal uh, collateral effects result in uh, decreased tissue damage uh, and uh, enhanced uh, patient comfort uh, hemostasis and coagulation are readily achieved essential for the medically compromised patients then some procedures can also be done under uh, topical anesthesia alone and the concept of uh, minimally invasive dentistry can be achieved. The lasers are always safe to use if the operator adheres to the protocols. Like using the protective eye eyewear and everything. So the, uh, this, uh, this is the, uh, the, the gingivectomy that is done using lasers. This was uh, done with an 808 nanometer diode laser at 2.5 watt continuous wave mode. And this is a three week follow up. This was pre-operative, this was immediate post-op, and this is the three week follow up. The, uh, the gingivectomy should always be done when there is a suprabony pocket, okay? And, uh, uh, and it, it, it uh, decreases the uh, gingival tissue in case of enlargement. And the advantages of using lasers in gingivectomy is that there is an increased visualization. Because we are sealing the capillaries and the lymphatics and because of that there is no immediate bleeding that you know, actually uh, covers our sight from what we are cutting and what we are not. So that is one big advantage of using lasers in uh, gingivectomy. And the laser wound generally showed, uh, shows delayed epithelialization, uh, collagen production, and inflammation with a lower tensile strength. So in later phases of healing, um, the process accelerates with uh, collagen production and epithelialization, lower wound contraction, and therefore there is less scar formation. But the contraindications of gingivectomy using um, uh, the lasers is that when there is access to the osseous structure and uh, the gingival attachment is inadequate or absent, that is uh, regarding the biologic width, which again I'm, uh, I'll be talking about in the coming slides. This is a laser operculectomy uh, that I did at my uh, clinic. Um, uh, this was a girl, uh, she, she, was, uh, she is 24 years old and she came to me with immense pain on her upper, uh, lower right wisdom tooth. Uh, she, uh, sh she had uh, her lower left wisdom tooth removed because of the same reason, pain and everything. Sorry. Okay, okay. Um, one minute, let's see. Can you continue? Oh, okay, okay, all right. Okay, so I will, Dr. Mariam, yeah, Dr. Mariam was asking me about, um, yeah, about the ulcers. So I'll just show you to that. Yes, okay. So this is the method that we use for ulcers. That is the photobiomodulation method. Um, the, see, in this uh, picture, you can see there's the laser beam in a defocused, defocused mode, okay? The center is the vaporization. And concentric to that, there is coagulation 
and concentric to that there is denaturation of the tissues and concentric to that we have the photothermal effect and beyond that we have the photostimulating effect we finally want this photostimulating effect for the healing of ulcers uh, this is the treatment of um, herpetic ulcer which was done using a diode lasers a diode laser of 8 not 810 nanometer diode laser uh, it was done in a defocused mode uh, you can see the post-operative view after 24 hours. How much it has healed after 24 hours? So, uh, but the only thing that we have to keep in mind when we are treating ulcers with laser is that uh, the treated area should include the entire lesion as well as at least 3 to 5 la uh, millimeters lateral to the erythematous halo marking the lesion's border. So if a small amount of um, uh, healthy tissue is not treated, then the lesion can recur. That's all. Without anesthesia. Actually, we start from a very low power. We use a defocused mode. Okay. We use a, a very low, we start with a very low power and we actually get the help of the patient. We keep asking the patient, do you feel something? Do you feel something? So from 0.5 watt power say example we uh, start uh, at 0.5 watt we may reach up to 0.6 or 0.7 watt until the patient feels something and once the patient starts feeling some pain or some something then we treat the halo for about two to three minutes and that's it okay yeah <laughs> okay Okay. Oh, intraoral as well. In the same manner. The afters also in the same manner. Yeah, in the same manner. So that the afters also don't recur. That's what we, I think the only method we can use to treat the after ulcers so that they don't recur is with lasers. Okay? No, I don't. No. <laughs> you mean ultrasound scaling? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I do that. That's what I said. Uh, that's what I said in the beginning. We, That's what I said, sir. See, uh, we do the scaling and root planing first with the ultrasound device, okay, ultrasonic device. And then we do the lasers. We don't do lasers just because there might be subgingival calculus. We cannot remove the subgingival calculus with the lasers. We have to first remove that. We even have to do a root planing if required and then do the lasers. Then the lasers. Immediately after, immediately after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need not, need not. You can do that also. Need not, but need not. You can, see, in severe cases, like, you know, we, there are studies showing um, a healing of even 11 millimeter of periodontal pocket depth. Even that much. So, uh, even... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh no. That's what I said. So, uh, it all depends upon the case. Okay? But, uh, laser therapy won't work in just one session, no. We might have to do a repeated session. That's what I said about the, uh, in the first, um, in the beginning slides, I told you about the, yeah, yeah. So, we have to repeatedly call the patient maybe in a two-week time gap okay we call back the patient we check the pockets again we observe uh, how about the inflammation and everything and accordingly we repeatedly give if the pockets are still deeper like that not in one session we have to give a repeated session if required okay 
Okay. Uh, so, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I haven't. No, 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 no. Uh, here, we, we have insurance over here, but the insurance don't specifically say this done with laser. No, they don't cover like that. But um, I haven't done an insurance case until now. Let's, we, we, we can try, I don't know, maybe. This is why I said uh, we must consider lasers more. We should. Yeah, work great with lasers because we, we, we can avoid the recurrence of the frenal attachment coming again and again. Okay. Uh, No, no, no. Okay, so this was uh, the phrenectomy uh, done with the diode lasers in continuous wave mode in 3 watt power. The first is the immediate post op picture, second, the two days post op picture, then the one week post op and in 21 days follow up. Okay, and now if, if we can say a disadvantage of um, lasers, laser treatment is the delayed healing. Delayed healing of minimum two weeks it will take to completely heal the lesion. That's one thing maybe if we can say one disadvantage of lasers. This is again another uh, phrenectomy, higher uh, attachment of upper labial frenum done uh, with uh, 8, 10 nanometer diode laser. Okay. Uh, even mucogingival surgeries can be done with uh, lasers. The graft removal using uh, lasers and sealing of surgical wound uh, can be done for the control of bleeding and uh, removal of uh, soft tissue lesions can uh, like uh, pyogenic gra granuloma can be done vestibuloplasty and even crown this is again one of my personal case where uh, this premolar needed a little more of uh, I needed to make a, a, a post and core and a crown I need to give it give to this patient so I I had to remove um, a bit of a tissue covering the buckle and the uh, distal aspect of the tooth. So I did that it, without any um, as anesthesia, not even topical anesthesia. And the best part was that I immediately I could take the impression for the crown and I could send uh, to the lab, which was a big advantage for me. I could do it in one day, everything in one day without any discomfort for the patient. Um, this was what I was talking about, the biologic width. That is the biologic width for the ginger, uh, gingivectomy procedures. So this is the circular uh, depth. Um, and... Uh, this much is the epithelial attachment about 1 to 1.07 millimeters and the connective tissue is 0 0.97 millimeters adding up to 2.04 millimeters of biologic width. So we must always consider a 2.5 millimeters of probing depth before cutting the gingiva using lasers. So 2.5 millimeters should be always left without cutting. Then uh, this is a case report that I found on the internet for the uh, treatment of pyogenic granuloma. And uh, it was done using a 980 nanometer diode laser. And ex uh, uh, excisional biopsy was done. And uh, as you can see, the one month follow up, there is absolutely no lesion at all. And it looks very normal, very normal.
leukoplakia, the one of the precancerous lesions. Being uh, this is an asymptomatic leukoplakic uh, lesion uh, located on the soft palate. The treatment was done using a CO2 laser which involves two ablative uh, passes with debridement, leaving a thin layer of uh, SR to help protect the area during the initial healing. And this is the two-month post-operative view demonstrating the complete healing with no evidence of any active disease. The photobiomodulation procedure. Uh, and the purpose is not to ablate the tissue, but to modify the surface epithelium. The tissue appears self weld which improves healing. And there are bactericidal effects also that is promoting the healing. Okay. Now, the post-op instructions that you can give to the patient after the treatment with lasers is that they must refrain from oral hygiene, that is toothbrushing on that a affected area. A soft brush can be used to just remove the coronal plaque and a soft food, non-spicy food, not very hot food may be used and analgesics like uh, uh, NSAIDs can be used uh, as and when required. If there is a persistent swelling or bleeding, we, the patient should contact the physician. If dressing is removed, not to be concerned unless it causes any discomfort. An oral um, antiseptic oral rinse like chlorhexidine uh, should be used by the patient to promote the healing, uh, not to uh, cause any superficial infect, uh, also to avoid the superficial infections. Then after the first week, they can continue the gentle brushing. If wound healing, yeah, uh, uh, the wound healing is one part that we might be concerned about when we talk about lasers, laser surgeries. It will take around two weeks. When we do it with a knife, it's like seven to ten days of healing. But when we do it with lasers, it can take up to 14 days of healing time. Okay, now lasers in the uh, fixed uh, prosthetic and cosmetic reconstruction, the Exposure of, uh, it is used for the exposure of clear margins for impression taking, uh, for heart tissue and soft tissue crown lengthening, creation of physiologic emergen emergence profile, cleansable ovate, pontic side creation, laser bleaching and melanin depigmentation. The, there is a gingival uh, troughing done using a diode laser. Uh, after the gingival troughing was done, the veneers were placed and uh, this is, yeah. And also, uh, during the gingival troughing, to establish the gingival proportions uh, with diode laser, carbonization may be seen on these tissues. These are the carbonizations. So, this layer can be quickly removed using a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution in a diffusing a brush syringe. Now, uh, always in these procedures, keep the uh, laser tip parallel to the tooth surface or slightly angled away from the surface to avoid any absorption of the wavelength by the heart tissues. And this is the final post-operative uh, uh, view of the healthy tissue after the gingival troughing and the uh, placement of the final restorations. Ovate pontic site. Uh, Always for the ovate uh, pontic site creation, first locate, locate the center of the desired pontic site and then mark it with the laser tip. And then uh, start from the center with a small diameter movements and swir swirl outward to the peripheral boundary to the, uh, of the ovate pontic. This is a case personally done by me at my clinic. Uh, melanin depigmentation again using uh, 808 diode laser, um, 2.5 watt power continuous wave mode. Uh, this is the immediate post op after the uh, melanin depigmentation procedure. And this is the seven weeks follow up. You can see the result I got from a diode laser for depigmentation. The patient was extremely happy. 
Okay, the laser bleaching. Now, the objective of laser, uh, lasers in bleaching procedure is that to excite the bleaching agents using lasers. The, uh, the advantage is that the chemical reactions proceeds at a faster rate, thereby reducing the exposure time of the bleaching agent to the teeth. And the lasers in implant dentistry, in this section, from now on, I would be uh, doing a small com comparative study between the different types of lasers that we use also. So diode lasers, we have 8, 8 10 nanometer, 940 nanometer, uh, 980 and 1064 nanometers. The target is the hemoglobin and the melanin in soft tissues. So the nan 980 nanometer is absorbed into water at a slightly higher rate than 810 nanometer wavelength. And this makes the 980 nanometer wavelength diode more useful and safe around the implants for peri-implantitis therapy. Uh, the uh, better the absorption of the wavelength, lesser will be the collateral damage, the thermal damage to the implant as well. The advantage of uh, diode lasers over NDAG is that there is a lesser penetration depth, um, thus greater operator control and reduced risk of lateral thermal damage and uh, smaller, uh, again another advantage of diodes is that it's a smaller size and affordable cost and it can be used in almost every dental clinics. Okay, uh, NDAG uh, lasers are 1064 nanometers. It's um, fiber optic delivered contact lasers generating free running pulse beam of energy. Potential heat penetration is greater than that of diode lasers. Uh, it's poorly absorbed in water but readily absorbed in pigments like hemoglobin and melanin pigments. It has got a very effective coagulation and uh, hemostasis and the only disadvantage is that they have a greater penetration depth of up to 4 millimeters but greater potential for, uh, for uh, damaging the implant surfaces. So it's a complete no-no for, uh, uh, for the treatment of peri-implantitis. And DACs cannot be used for uh, peri-implantitis, but it is very useful for the periodontal therapies. The CO2 lasers, uh, they are the most versatile uh, lasers, very fast and efficient in cutting the soft tissue, a stronger hemostatic and bactericidal effect, and uh, it creates minimal wound contraction and minimizes scarring. I think I am going a little too long. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think um, that's it. Uh, and about erbium lasers, and that's the final slide. So erbium li lasers are basically, uh, they are the heart tissue lasers. So... Um, they are highly absorbed in water and hydroxyapatite and so uh, they are good for ablating the heart tissue such as uh, tooth structure and bone. And they create micro explosions in hydroxyapatite by vaporizing the water molecules within the heart tissues and thus break down the heart tissue during ablation. No charring or carbonization and the heat generated is very minimal and uh, they are the least effective in achieving the hemostasis and very effective in treating peri-implantitis and mucositis as it, it does not uh, cause any uh, damage to the implant surface. And they have excellent bactericidal properties. Um, the energy ruptures the cell membranes of bacteria when absorbed into the intracellular water. So these are my uh, references and if any more questions can be asked.